Good evening. I would like, first of all, to thank Davide Ponzini for the invitation. I will discuss today the new heritage paradigm of the Olympic Games. All the host cities have in common to have been highlighted thanks to Olympic Games they have hosted. The Games are the biggest event in the world in terms of television viewers, tickets sold, a uh, number of people at the live sites and journalists presence on site. However, the after Olympics is not always as planned. The economic, social and environmental costs are the most often considerable. Over the last uh, couple of decades, the presumed benefits of hosting a mega event has been challenged. The declining interest in hosting represent a shift in the urban politics of mega events, where increased skepticism towards mega event promises convinced urban officials to decline opportunities to participate in bid competition and even to cancel bids. In response to this skepticism, the International Libby Committee launched the Agenda 2020, which encourages innovations in bid objectives. The Agenda 2020 signaled that the uh, International Libby Committee was cognizant of the need to reduce the costs of hosting and also its willingness to consider bid proposals that offer different solutions to meet the game's needs within different cities' contexts. Three recommendations uh, directly concern the venues. Control costs and have financial sovereignty built on existing venues and be consistent with development plans. Olympics become more embedded with the existing city and this, of course, has major implications for heritage. Can we hope that we will not see in the next Olympics the images that circulated worldwide before Beijing Olympic Games showing this heartbreaking destruction of the traditional Beijing Hutongs for the game's sake? Are we now at a turning point in the urban approaches in relation with the games? Will we see totally different games in the next decades? This is a pending question. Uh, to the answer of which I will try to contribute during my very short presentation today without the ambition of giving um, a definitive answer. I will take as an example here Paris 2024 Olympic Games, which are the first edition to fully benefit from the Olympic Agenda 2020 and are announced to be the first to be aligned with the Paris Agreement. I will discuss issues of sustainability and heritage, which are obviously closely related. First of all, Paris Games will be sustainable. Paris 2024 Organizing Committee and stakeholders are committed to support the emergence and development of the national territory of projects that have a positive impact on the climate. Paris 2024 ambitions to 55% decrease in the game's carbon footprint in comparison with the last two editions of the Summer Games before Tokyo, means London uh, 2012 and Rio 2016. Paris 2024 is thus announced as the first major sporting event to offset more CO2 emissions than it admits, thanks both to reduction and compensation. Paris 2024 explains the reduction on the basis of a sober concept based on 95% of existing or temporary infrastructures and on the development of low carbon solutions for all activities. For compensation, Paris 2024 is committed to offsetting the emissions that cannot be avoided, supporting CO2 avoidance or capture projects, on all five continents that meet the best international certification standards. This approach builds on the proactive environmental strategy of the city of Paris and its current municipality. The Paris 2024 project shares with the mayor of Paris the goal of establishing, for example, swimming areas in the Seine uh, River in Paris and also in the surrounding areas and also doubling the number of bicycle lanes, which we, uh, will allow 
70% of uh, uh, people, of the public, to be no more than a 30-minute bike ride away from the city's Olympic sites. Paris also will build on existing venues. Let's remind here that Paris is um, a kind of serial bidder, having unsuccessfully submitted bids for the 1992, 2008 and 2012 Olympic Games. Bid teams have changed their bidding logics in search of, we could say, a good special fit for the Games. The main question of all the recently failed bids was whether principally to hold the Games within the uh, Ring Road or beyond it, outside of Paris and Ramuros. Each of the three failed bids lent evidence to the notion that new bids are forced to target new sites to locate only big infrastructure. Since land unavailability uh, was already a significant issue in conceiving a candidacy for the 1220 Summer Olympics, securing an intramuros uh, site was uh, more problematic for uh, 2024. The logic of compactness has shifted between 12, uh, 2012 and uh, 2024, uh, the two candidacies, in fact. Since locating an Olympic village in Paris was no longer a possibility, the BT team once again targeted a site in the Plaine Commune, north of Paris, and promoted the social housing legacy of um, the Games that, in fact, uh, would mat materialize through regenerating this area of Grand Paris. This strategy is aligned with the desire to use uh, 2024 games as an opportunity to reduce inequalities between the urban core and the suburbs. The sites of the Paris 2024 project are built around two major axes, uh, an axis in the heart of Paris, uh, which will provide prestigious heritage uh, sites for the Games, and also a Paris Saint Saint Denis axis uh, consistent with the uh, Greater Paris Urban Development Project. In addition, there are some other sport hubs uh, to the west around uh, Versailles and Saint Quentin, and also to the east part of Paris. Paris 2024 will build on a limited number of existing venues. 95% of the venues are uh, indeed existing or temporary, and this is a very, very important point. The um, Par Paris 2024 uh, concept uh, is very compact. The Olympic and Paralympic village is located seven kilometers north of the center of Paris and less than two kilometers from the Stade de France. For the spectators, all competition sites will be accessible on foot or by public uh, transportation. Paris will also use as venues some of the world's most visited heritage uh, landmarks. The Eiffel Tower for the beach volley, La Place de la Concorde for the, the urban sports, the Chateau de Versailles for the horse riding, the Champs Elysees, the Grand Palais for fencing taekwondo, but also the Esplanade des Invalides for uh, archery. According to the organizers, uh, historic landmarks will underpin the most spectacular venue plan in games history, and France will offer the world an exceptional playground, guaranteeing an unforgettable experience for all participants in the games. These uh, landmarks uh, offer also spectacular broadcast images for TV viewers around the world, as well as great publicity for the sponsors. However, however, everything is not always uh, perfect and theory is not always practice. Several issues remain here to be discussed. We must not forget that the Olympics are an event that transforms usually a city into a gigantic construction site that bets on a record number of tourists and therefore on an increase uh, in air traffic and is an event whose main sponsors are multinational companies, the priority of which is not always sustainability and heritage. 
So let me here focus on some examples in Paris. The first issue that I would like to uh, discuss here is the issue of urban uh, fractures. The monumental heritage is certainly very important in attracting sponsors. And this is one of the reasons why Versailles was preferred for horseback riding over other possible locations. The use of very central, very prestigious sites can be extremely attractive to sponsors. However, uh, it was the participation of Saint-Denis that gave meaning to the Paris bid. Saint-Denis reminds the need for France to reconnect with this territory which suffers social and territorial fractures. And as said uh, by the president of the Council of Saint-Denis, uh, who is uh, quoted here, it is in Saint-Denis that the success of the Olympi Games will be played. In 30 years, it is there that the heritage of Paris 2024 will be judged. And this is, I believe, a very important statement made in front of the risk of reducing Saint-Denis symbolic participation to the benefit of more iconic and more prestigious sites. The second point that I would like to discuss is the issue of temporary uh, venues. The development of temporary and even mobile venues is an emerging trend within mega events with uh, um, several um, host and candidate uh, cities now promising to move venues to alternative locations after an event has finished. Well, we usually think that of temporary venues as those rapid, rapidly uh, assembled just before the event. However, in London, the construction of the basketball arena began in 2009, means three years before the Games. There is also the challenge of defining sustainability criteria for temporary venues. Costs is also one of the disadvantages of these uh, temporary venues. In Paris, several associations have expressed their opposition to the project of the Grand Palais Ephemer, which is now built on the Champ de Mars in uh, project launch in 2018. These associations believe that this is a confiscation from the public of the Champ de Mars, which is a heritage site open to all residents, Parisians or visitors. According to the associations, the impact of this Grand Palais Ephemere by its surface and its volume, by the intensity also of the uh, attendance uh, and the duration of at least four years, will be particularly problematic. So despite the good uh, intentions, Olympic Games, Games may have impacts, impacts real or symbolic on heritage. Three examples can be very, very briefly discussed here. The first is the transformation of Place de la Concorde. Um, in fact, a few months ago, the organization committee of the Olympic Games in 2024 showed an image, uh, the image you have here in this uh, slide, um, the image of Place de la Concorde as it is supposed to be during the Games when it will host the different sport events, the skateboard, the basketball, the BMX free freestyle or the, the breaking. The final rendering of Concorde shocked Parisians. It presents four uh, huge uh, courts and four uh, quite giant rent stands surrounding the famous obelisk in the center of the square. The obelisk and the fountains are totally invisible, which invites us to ask some questions concerning the symbolic heritage status of the place. I uh, don't have the time to elaborate here, but uh, um, this um, uh, the similar re uh, reactions have also arisen for the uh, Jardin de Versailles. The second example that I would like to discuss here are the tropical greenhouses of the Serre de Teuil uh, gardens. The French Tennis uh, Federation wanted to build a new tennis court in place of the tropical greenhouses uh, of the Serre de Teuil. This resulted to the demolition of the greenhouses and the moving of botanical collections housed um, previously there. 
The project has created a uh, contemporary, of, co uh, of course, greenhouses that you can see in the right part of this slide uh, around the new tennis court. However, these do not meet the technical requirements for accommodating uh, fragile plants. ICOMOS, the International Council of Monuments and Sites, had warned of these risks before the project was carried out. At the time, the defenders of the greenhouses had proposed an alternative uh, project for the construction of the stadium. They pointed the irony, we, we could say, the irony between the desire to organize green Olympic Games and the destruction of the tropical greenhouses in uh, Otay. Uh, yeah, this is Versailles that I mentioned before and the temporary uh, installations in Versailles. The third example uh, I would like to mention here is another destruction of uh, the capital's uh, green heritage. The construction of the swimming pool, the future training pool for the 2024 uh, Games and also of a solarium, threatens the Aubervilliers allotments, uh, the Jardin Ouvrier, the uh, workers' uh, gardens that you can see in this slide, located in the heart of a working class neighborhood in the Paris suburbs. The construction project for the Olympic swimming pool, but also uh, the future works for the uh, Grand Paris, for the uh, Grand Paris Express, required the destruction of 4,000 square meters of these workers' uh, gardens. The project uh, causes the eviction of the gardeners, which again is quite paradoxical when the city argues about the need to produce local. The workers' gardens, of course, represent um, a less monumental heritage than uh, the one of uh, Place de la Concorde or the uh, Versailles gardens, but they also represent a very uh, precious um, heritage for the city, both because of its social connotations and also because of the real and symbolic importance of these uh, garden lands. So, uh, as a conclusion, um, using the historic city for mega sport events raises a number of difficulties. Composed of historical monuments, museums and sites, squares, gardens, avenues, but also of more modest places, urban heritage is by nature fragile in terms of its material uh, conservation. The desire to organize the Olympic Games uh, on the existing city and to avoid constructions is, of course, very positive. I'm not discussing this. This is very positive. However, one should not be naive. Taking this option has real impacts on heritage, and it would be a mistake to underestimate or to avoid to fully take into consideration the challenges uh, of the organization of a mega event on a heritage uh, site. Thank you so much for your attention.